Okay, our next topic in forensics is forensic serology. And for our first lesson, we're going to talk about blood type. So today we're going to answer the question, what determines your blood type? You're going to understand the genetics of blood type. And then finally, the significance of blood type in the crime scene. So human blood type. Your blood type is determined by the presence or absence of proteins on the surface of the red blood cells, and those proteins are called antigens. And the possible blood types are blood type A, so A antigen, blood type B, B antigens, blood type AB, which means you have both A and B antigens, and then blood type O. And a person with blood type O has no antigens on the red blood cells. Here's a quick chart of um, blood type distribution. So this is just to kind of give you an indication of which blood types are most and least uh, common. So if you can see, looking at the chart, that the majority of the population, or almost 50% of the population, O and A are very close um, 43 to 45% of the people have of people have blood type O, 40 to 42% A, 10 to 12 is B, and then the rarest, least common is 3 to 5% um, with AB. If you look down at the bottom of the chart, you can see that they're uh, always divided into O positive and O negative. You see 39% of the population, and this is of that 43 to 45 are O positive, and 6% are O negative. And then you can see, same thing for A, A positive, more common than A negative, B positive, more common than B negative, and then AB positive um, at 4%, more common than AB negative. And if you notice, only 1% of the population is AB negative, so very rare. Um, what determines that positive or negative? Well, it's something called the RH factor, which is nothing more than an, another protein. So it's another antigen found on the surface of the red blood cells. It's referred to as the D antigen. It's the RH factor because it was first discovered in rhesus monkeys. If you are RH positive, then you have that D antigen, that protein. If you are RH negative, you do not. It's neither good nor bad. It's just another indicator, just like the antigens A, B, A, B, R. And approximately 85% of the human population is RH positive. So as we saw in the chart, they're O positive, they're A positive, they're B positive. And here's just another visual. Here it shows you a person with blood type A. They have the A antigens on the outside of the red blood cell. If they're A positive, that you can see they have the RH protein on the outside. If they're A negative, they do not. So antibodies are Y-shaped proteins that are secreted by white blood cells. And hopefully you remember, you have white blood cells in your bloodstream, and those white blood cells function to protect you. They attack anything that's foreign, like a bacteria cell. Or in terms of blood type, if there are foreign antigens that they discover. And their goal really is just to destroy them. So if you are a person who has blood type A, that means that you have those A antigens, that A protein, on the surface of your red blood cells. And in your blood serum or blood plasma, you have B antibodies. So what that means is those B antibodies will clump if they are mixed with B antigens. So if a person with blood type A is accidentally given blood type B, then what happens is that clumping reaction, which can actually cause clotting and death. So it's very important that we understand, um, that we know what a person's blood type is prior to a transfusion. Here's a good visual um, 
just to give you an idea of what those blood cells will look like. So here's our red blood cell, and this is um, a blood person with blood type A. That's what their cells would look like, this purple uh, diagram on the outside of the cell representing the A antigen. And then in the serum or the plasma around that blood cell, you can see there are B antibodies. And the next diagram, a person with blood type B, there's your red blood cells again. This time they have these yellow um, diagrams on the outside of the cell, and those represent the B antigens. And then in the plasma around the outside of the cell are A antibodies. And notice those A antibodies are the same color as the A antigens and vice versa with the B antigen antibody. And if you look closely at them, you can see that they will kind of fit together almost like a lock and key. If you're a person with blood type AB, then you have both antigens, A and B, on the surface of your red blood cells. And notice in the serum there's no antibodies. And the last type, blood type O, no antigens on the outside of the red blood cells, but they have antibodies to both A and B. And here's a, a quick chart that just gives you an idea. So why would it be important? Because you'd want to make sure that um, the, there wasn't a reaction, a clotting, clumping reaction when you got a transfusion. So a person with blood type O has those A, B antibodies in the blood serum. So a person with blood type O can only get blood from someone with O. So they're always looking for blood type O. They can give blood, they're the universal donor, they can give blood to any one of these types. And the reason being, there's no antigens on the surface, so you're not going to have a reaction with um, an antibody-antigen reaction that causes clumping. So it's safe to give blood type O to anybody. Blood type AB, they can get blood from anybody. They can get O, they can get A, they can get B, they can get AB but they can only give blood to AB. Can't give it to A, can't give it to B, and can't give it to O. Blood type A, they can get blood from A, they can get blood from O, they can give blood to A or AB. Blood type B, they can get blood from B, they can get blood from O, but they can give blood to B and AB. I'm going to talk a little bit. You see the O's, the AA, the AO. We're going to talk about that in the next slide. All right, so the genetics of blood type. When we talk about genetics, the first thing we talk about, and I know you, you looked at some of these definitions already in the chapter, we look at the genotype. And so we want to know what the genes are. So the genes you know from biology, you get from your mother and your father. So you get one set of alleles from your mother for a trait, one set of alleles from your father. With blood type, you can be either homozygous or heterozygous. So if you're a person with blood type B, your genotype could be IB, IB, and we use the capital I because there's more than two alleles. It just helps us, makes it easier for us to distinguish. Or you can be someone who is IB and carry the O, because the B is dominant. So in this heterozygous condition, you're going to get blood type O. And then your phenotype is the actual blood type itself. And here's what I was talking about, heterozygous. So you have two different alleles. In this case, they have one for capital A, which is dominant, and then they have um, the allele for O. So that person has blood type A. Is there just a carrier for O? And then if you're homozygous, you're either I capital letter, I capital letter, or so in this case I A I A, or you're homozygous recessive, in which case in the blood type you would have two lowercase i's. And then, and what we're going to do in class a little bit later is we're going to use these Punnett squares, and hopefully you remember Punnett squares from biology. We're going to use the Punnett squares to predict the probability of blood type. So when we actually look at some situations where we're given a child with a specific blood type, 
or a suspect with a specific blood type. And this chart just separates it for you. It's a little bit clearer. So I have phenotype on one side, genotype on the other. And you can see if they're type B, they have B antigens, and there's their potential genotype. So someone who's homozygous for B or heterozygous for B is still going to be some of a blood type B. Same thing with A. Someone who's homozygous for A or heterozygous for A is still going to have blood type A. And then type AB, that's the only genetic, com the only genotype combination you can get, and their phenotype is going to be AB. And then the last one, blood type O, all you can have is those two hom homozygous recessive, and you get blood type O. No antigens. All right, so why is blood type important? Well, I alluded to the first point already, and that is if something happens to you and you need a blood transfusion, you need to get the right blood transfused to you. If, for example, as I used um, in the first couple of slides, was blood type A, if you have blood type A and you are given B by mistake, those antibodies in your bloodstream will attack that B and you'll get clotting or clumping, which is potentially deadly. So we need to know what type blood type you have in order to make sure that you get the correct blood transfusion. And we just had this blood drive last week, so hopefully there were many of you who gave and you understand the importance of having a, uh, a good blood supply. The other case is, you know, I used to see those shows, the Maury Povich show, and Who's the Daddy? Well, and, and for a long time, blood type was relied on to determine that. And so in paternity cases, we could rule out fathers, but we couldn't necessarily determine that person. And if you remember from our previous discussions, blood type is a class characteristic. And the reason being, think back to our percentages that we just looked at, the blood type distribution, the, uh, their class characteristics, because there are 45% of the population that have blood type O. So if I have a baby with blood type O and I have a father with blood type O and a mother who is a heterozygous for O, I can say he could be the father. But I can't say for sure. If I had a father who's blood type AB, I could rule him out. I can say, you know what, he's not the father, not the daddy as they like to say on TV. DNA is really the only way to prove paternity. And the other potential use for blood typing is to positively match a suspect to a crime scene, or more specifically, rule out a suspect. And I'll use some examples of that um, in the activity that you'll do in class. You could have a person who has um, a matching blood type to a crime scene. So let's say they find blood type A at a crime scene and I have three suspects and one of them has blood type A and the other two do not. I can say that that's the potential suspect, but I can't say without a doubt unless I can prove that his DNA was at that scene. So again, in that case, I'm ruling out a suspect, but I'm not actually able to prove guilt. Okay, so we're going to stop here and then we're going to do um, some Punnett squares in class and then work on a couple of... Um, exercises, and then a lab activity.